God for guiding us, guiding us, trusting in His Word the way. Thanks to God for guiding us, guiding us, leading us through judgment. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm doing well by God's Hello? grace. I'm doing well by God's grace. Thank you. Please go ahead. Well, uh, first, I want to thank you so much for this program. It is so helpful to me. Um, could you read Matthew chapter 10, verse 15? I got a pretty complicated question about that. Okay, Matthew 10, 15. Uh, let's see, it says, Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Okay, here, here my question, basically there are two aspects to this that I find difficult to understand. First of all, Sodom, the destruction of Sodom happened hundreds of years before Jesus was speaking this. And so it implies that people that are different time periods are going to be experiencing judgment at the same time. Uh, not so that, that's my necessarily. Yeah, not necessarily. It, it can also imply, and, and I think this would be the case, that God is using Sodom and Gomorrah as a figure of something that will or uh, that will be in view uh, in the day of judgment. Okay, that's interesting. Could you could you elaborate yeah, on that a little bit? Yeah, if we if we um, look here, um, uh, does it mention the city? No, uh, verse fourteen. Whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I sent you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Okay, so so uh, I think in other um, similar references, it, um, the Lord speaks of Capernaum. Uh, woe unto thee, Capernaum. And, and, right. and, and he also compares it to Sodom and Gomorrah. It will be more tolerable for um, Sodom and Gomorrah than for you. Well, Capernaum, here the city's not mentioned, but it mentions that house or city. The church is likened to a house, and it's likened to a city, the house of God, the city Jerusalem. So the, the word of God has come to them first, and, uh, and, and they despise it, they reject it, so then God makes the statement, it'll be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than for you. And that uh, directs us to Luke chapter 8, where God speaks of uh, stripes um, that, that are applied to those that knew their master's will, they receive more. And, and those that knew not their master's will, they receive less. And, 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 and so uh, since God will be more tolerable to Sodom and Gomorrah in, in these scriptures to make that comparison, Sodom and Gomorrah would represent the world while Capernaum or the house or city would represent the church. And well, Okay, that's a, that's a great answer, but the problem is it leads me to my next question. Okay. If annihilation is the is the final end, uh, how is there a a, a, gra a, a, a gradation, mm -hmm. a, a uh, you know a gradation of judgment? Right. Uh, and that's the this verse, verse implies a gradation of judgment. Well, well. Um, now, first of all, it's not referring to the actual people. Of Sodom and Gomorrah, so so our understanding that when the unsaved die, they die, and uh, that's that's not in view, but it's using Sodom and Gomorrah as a type and figure of the world. And uh, how how do we understand when God says there'll be more stripes for right. uh, the one who knew His Master's will? as opposed to the one who knew not. 
And, and Great the, question. the reference of stripes leads us back to Deuteronomy 25. And in Deuteronomy 25, God gives the law for judges to follow concerning the sentencing of punishment. And, and it, it's to be administered by giving stripes. And God sets a limit. You cannot apply more than 40 stripes. And we know the Apostle Paul experienced um, five times judges of Israel who would have been referring to that law and sentencing him. They wanted to give him the maximum penalty. So they sentenced him to 40 lashes save one. Just to be sure, they didn't go over because in Deuteronomy 25, um, the Lord says, you can only give 40 lest the wicked man seem vile unto you. So it would be a very bad thing for a judge to exceed that limitation. And so five times, Paul was judged of Jewish judges and was sentenced to 40 but received 39. Now, we can see how that fits with our timeline for the time of the end of the world. The official judgment on the church began in the Jubilee year of 1994. And um, although the church age ended May 21, 1988, there was the 2300 evening morning period that was built in to God's program of times and seasons. He alternates rain, famine, rain. And, and so there was the reign of the church age, the early reign, followed by famine, 2,300 days, followed by the latter reign, September 7th, 1994, at the conclusion of the 2,300 days. And, and that's why we say 1994, September 7th, 1994, was the official starting point of the judgment of God on the church because it could not be known if God were going to continue to use the church to bring the latter rain until you reach that point. And then when he did not, but sent the gospel uh, via um, a ministry like Family Radio outside of the church and opened the scriptures, the church age was over and so forth, it, it became conclusive. And, and, and thus, 1994 was the official beginning of the end of the church age. And, and from 1994 to 2033, we have 40 inclusive years, 39 actual. And judgment, the, the end time judgment program of God began at the house of God. The Bible insists upon that, that God began pouring out his wrath first on the city called by his name on the churches. He, he, uh, I'm starting to lose you here, Chris. Well, we well, were well, talking here, about, right. yeah, yeah, hold on. Here, here's the point. He, he poured out his wrath on the churches, the P, and in the churches, they knew his will. They knew his will. That was the administering of the wrath of God or the stripes until May 21, 2011. That was exclusively on the churches. And then on May 21, 2011, it expands to include all unsaved inhabitants of the earth. And, and uh, those are the people that knew not their master's will. And, and so, all right, let's say there is a, a churchman, a churchman. And it's the year 1994, 1995, 1990, whatever. And he's in the church. And the church is the object of the wrath of God. It's a spiritual judgment. There, uh, he's, he's being judged in the sense while he's in the church, there's no Holy Spirit activity, no salvation. He has his family in the church, his wife, his children. So. Uh, and outside the church, there's the latter rain falling. 
and people were being saved, a great multitude. But in the church, no latter rain, no salvation, and he's ignorant of it. Can you see the wrath of God upon him? It's a very serious matter. Very serious. The wrath of God is not upon the nations at that point. They're receiving the latter rain. Then God's saving. So the nations are being blessed. Go all the way. The churchman stays there, 2005, all the way up to May 21, 2011. And, and he keeps his family there. So, uh, of course, you know, when, when it impacts your own family, your own children, that, that's a horrible judgment. And so they, the, the people in the church, experience the wrath of God for about 17 years, 23 years overall, if you go back to May 21, 1988, but officially for about 17 years, then the transition, and now God begins to judge the world where they were experiencing the latter rain and great blessing of the possibility of salvation. Now that comes to an end, so the the people outside the church now experience a similar thing that those within the church's experience, no salvation possible for themselves, for their family, for any loved ones or friends. So they are being judged. But who else is continuing to be judged? All the unsaved that were in the churches, they're still a part of the world. And, and so their judgment, spiritual judgment, continues all the way to 2033, which results. In, and if we were to say that uh, God, by telling us of 40 stripes save one, that he was sort of indicating or there, there is an underlying um, insinuation that it has to do with the years of judgment of judgment day overall beginning at the, the house of God concluding in 2033 then the churchman uh, he receives um, sentenced to 40 40 inclusive but he receives 39 stripes the man outside the church he receives 23 inclusive, but actually 22. So the the one individual... How does, how does, yes. How does, you, you, I don't get the math, but very nice. From, from 2033 minus 39, uh, what is that? That's, no, um, 1994. Oh, oh, isn't that amazing? Yeah. <clears throat> now that is amazing. Now, but here, here's my point. My, I, I, your logic is impeccable, but that, but for years, camping said that the the end of the church age was 1988, which was 1,955 years. It broke down, broke down to yeah. five times. Well, well, hold times on. 23, so. hold on, hold on, because I thought, I thought that um, you know, I had, I had come up with something myself when I started. I started to think, well, no, 1994 is the official end of the church age. And I thought, well, th this is uh, something we're just learning more about because of our uh, vantage point of living into this Judgment Day period. And I thought, well, Mr. Camping, like you, taught that the judgment on the church began in 1988. Well, but actually, right. actually... Then I read, uh, I'm not sure it was the end of the church age and after, or time has an end. But Mr. Camping spoke of 1994 as the official starting point of judgment. And, and really? I, I would, yes. Uh, I, um, I, I don't know if I can't tell you offhand right now. I, I this came up before on Facebook and uh, I actually posted it explaining this. Uh, giving the ah. the page and and paragraph uh, and because I was happy because I had sincerely thought that 
um, this is something new. And, and then I was happy because it confirmed it. It was sort of, um, uh, you know, uh, it, it was being confirmed by a secondary source. Actually, he was the primary. I'm the secondary, but I didn't know that. And, and, and that, uh, you know, um, I, I really felt um, pleased about because it, it was sort of, a, 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 you know, a, a, another uh, eyes that were seeing the same thing. So, yes, Mr. Camp taught this first. I'll try to huh. find um, I'll try to find where that is. Uh, I'll have to find that post. But, yeah, I look in those two those two books. Uh, that that's a great that's a great. But, uh, but that answers you know. this whole question. It'll be more sure, tolerable absolutely. for you. It'll be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than for that house or for Capernaum, Capernaum typifying the church also. But you know, it gives it gives me a chill. It, it gives me a chill. That that was wonderful. Thank you so much, Chris. Guiding us, guiding us, trusting in His Word the way. Thanks to God for guiding us, guiding us, leading us through Judgment Day.